Good evening and welcome to the 1142nd public hearing and regular meeting of the Livonia City Planning Commission. I wish to inform all interested persons in the audience that for petitions on tonight's agenda, which involve a question of zoning, the Planning Commission makes a recommendation to the City Council and the City Council, after holding their own public hearing, makes the final determination as to whether a petition is approved or denied. The Planning Commission will hold the only public hearing on requests for preliminary plats and or vacating petitions. The Commission's recommendation is forwarded to City Council for the final determination as to whether the petition is accepted or rejected. If a petition requesting a waiver of use or a site plan is de denied tonight, the petitioner will have 10 days in which to appeal the decision in writing to City Council. Resolutions adopted by the City Planning Commission will become effective seven days after the date of adoption. Planning Commission and professional staff have reviewed each of these petitions upon their filing. Staff has furnished the Commission with both approving and denying resolutions, which the Commission may or may not use depending on the outcome of the proceedings tonight. If the Secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mrs. Smiley. Present. Mrs. McHugh. Here. Mr. Bongero. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Ventura. Here. Karen Magnos here. Chairman Walshaw. Is here. Also with us tonight, we have Mark Tormina and Stephanie Reese from our planning department. Again, I just wanna remind the folks in the audience that with each of these items, uh, you're gonna hear the item called. The petitioner will, the, our planning department will give some background information on the petition. The petitioner will then be asked to come up and speak to the item. And then there'll be an opportunity for anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the item to also come forward. So with that, if the secretary is ready, please start with number one on the public hearing section of our agenda. Petition 2019-03-02-04, submitted by My Mechanics Place, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to section 11.03K of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance number 543 as amended for the outdoor storage and rental of U-Haul trucks at 35655 Plymouth Road, located in the south side of Plymouth Road, between Yale and Levan Road in the northeast quarter of Section 32. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And we'll start with Mr. Tormino. Thank you. Again, this is a request for outside storage and uh, the rental of U-Haul trucks and trailers. Uh, this is property located on the south side of Plymouth Road. It's between Yale and Levan Roads. Uh, the site is roughly 1.7 acres in size. It has 273 feet of frontage on Plymouth Road and a depth of roughly 270 feet. As you can see from the zoning map, uh, the zoning of the property is C2 General <coughs> Business, uh, as are the properties immediately to the east and to the west of the subject site. Cross Plymouth Road on the north side is the Ford Transmission Plant, which is zoned M2 General Manufacturing. And then lying to the south are single-family homes that are part of the Kenwood Park uh, subdivision. Uh, there's an existing building on the property. It's about 19,000 square feet. It contains 14 service bays. The principal use of the site is an automotive uh, car uh, truck repair uh, business. Uh, parking, as you can see from the aerial photograph, is available both on the north side of the building as well as on the west side of the building. There's also vehicle storage uh, located within a fenced and gated area at the rear of the building. Um, Section 11.03K of the ordinance uh, allows for the open air display and rental of utility trailers subject to waiver use approval. Uh, the waiver use uh, for the automotive truck repair uh, business was granted by city council in 1993. So that's a use that's been ongoing for, for several years. Um, in 1995, the previous tenant of this property, which was Super High Tech Auto Service Center, did request waiver use approval for the outdoor storage and rental of U-Haul trucks that request back in uh, 95 was denied mainly because the commission at the time believed that the use would be detrimental to the neighborhood to the south. Uh, this matter is before you this evening as an after the fact request as the current owner entered into a contract with U-Haul without first going through the waiver use approval process. The rental vehicles would uh, utilize uh, or he would utilize the westerly 20 parking spaces um, on the, in the parking lot and that area is shaded on this uh, plan. Uh, the vehicles uh, would include uh, utility and cargo trailers as well as pickup trucks, uh, vans as well as several, several different size uh, box trucks. Uh, parking for automobile and light truck repair facilities based on two parking spaces for each uh, uh, 
repair bay plus one space for each employee. So by zoning ordinance standards, the principal use of the property, the auto repair business would require 33 parking spaces. Uh, the plan shows a total of 56 parking spaces. So if you eliminate 20 for the purposes of storing these <coughs> U-Haul trucks and trailers, uh, that allows for 36 uh, spaces to be available for customers and employees, which is three more than what the uh, ordinance requires. So the site does comply in terms of the, uh, the parking. Uh, there's a special requirement in the ordinance regarding uh, the uh, adequate lighting um, for the uh, storage uh, and, and rental of these vehicles. Um, there are existing light poles along the west property line directly over the area where the rental vehicles are parked. Uh, there is another special requirement that the area must be fenced and enclosed. Uh, this site is not in compliance with that requirement. There is no fence provided or proposed and uh, would thus require approval by City Council. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to read out the correspondence. Yes, please. Our first item is uh, dated April 3rd. It's from the Engineering Division and it reads, in accordance with your request, the Engineering Division has reviewed the above referenced waiver use petition. We have no objections to the proposed project at this time. The existing parcel was assigned the address of 35655 Plymouth Road. The legal description provided with the petition appears to be correct and should be used with the subject petition. The existing building is currently serviced by public sanitary, storm, and water main. The information submitted does not indicate any new connections to the existing utility services. So it appears that there will not be any additional impacts to the existing systems at this time. Should alterations to the existing services be required, the owner will need to provide plans to this department to determine if permits will be required. Should the owner do any work within the Plymouth Road right-of-way, they will need to contact the Michigan Department of Transportation for any permits that may be required. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next is a letter from the Livonia Fire and Rescue dated April 10th, and it reads, we have no objections to this proposal with the following stipulations. Number one, a fire access road shall be provided with not less than 20 feet of unobstructed width and have a minimum of 13 feet, six inches of vertical clearance in accordance to 18.23411 and 18.23412 of NFPA 1 2015. Number two, gate access for fire department vehicles must provide for 20 feet of unobstructed width on the west side and the rear lots and three, Knox box or Knox locks on gated entries must be installed per the fire department access. And that letter is signed by Greg Thomas, senior fire inspector. Next is a letter coming from our uh, Division of Police uh, uh, Traffic Bureau uh, indicating that they have no objections to the proposal. That letter is dated April 10th and signed by Brian Lee, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. Next is a letter from the Inspection Department dated April 30th that reads, pursuant to the to your request, the above reference petition has been reviewed and the following is noted. Number one, this plan does not make provision for a dumpster or dumpster enclosure. The commission and or council may wish to determine how trash disposal will be maintained at this site. And number two, a fence is required to enclose the area of the rental vehicles. It is unclear if a fence is being provided according to the proposed plan. This department has no further objections to this petition. That letter is signed by Jerome Hanna, director of inspection. Next is a letter of no objection coming from the Department of Finance as there are no amounts receivable, general or water and sewer. That letter is signed by Colleen Coleman, Chief Accountant for the City. And lastly, a letter of no objection coming from the Office of Treasurer dated April 3rd and signed by Linda Shield, Treasurer of the City of Livonia. And I'll just note um, that the uh, indication from the Inspection Department that there is no uh, dumpster on the site, uh, we did verify that there is, uh, while there is, it is not shown on this plan, there is a dumpster located uh, behind uh, the building within that fenced in uh, area. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Termina. Do we have any questions for the planning staff, Ms. Smiley? Uh, the letter from the fire department, I'm not sure about that. Do we have to, they have to have a, a fire access road and all that? What is that about? Well, I think that's just their uh, uh, perimeter access. Uh, and so the area that's fenced off, any areas that are fenced off on this property, they would ha need to have access, and that's provided through a Knox box. That's something that they coordinate with the, uh, with the owner uh, to get access. Uh, I don't see that being a problem in this particular case. They, they do have at least... Um, um, access on three sides of the building without any obstru obstructions okay. um, other than the fence and again they, they can deal with that with the uh, with the owner in terms of providing the necessary access through that okay that was my thank you very so much thank you mr. chair thank you miss Smiley any other questions for our planning staff mr. chairman yes mr. Bongero mark Jerome was saying from the building department that um, 
It's required to have a fence for the gun you haul area? Yeah, that, that is a requirement uh, in the ordinance for this type of use. Uh, I think that was discussed briefly at the, um, at the meeting uh, where it was indicated by the representative from U-Haul that, that it has not been an issue with security um, at these locations. Uh, did not feel that it was necessary, so they would seek a waiver from council uh, if this, if, depending on what your recommendation is. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, if the petitioner's here, please come forward. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Good. We always ask that you start with your name and address for our record. Hi, my name is Jameson Rabot. Um, my address is 12067 Boston Post, Livonia, Michigan, 48150. Thank you. And is there anything else that you want to add from what you've already heard? Um, I've never done this before. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go uh, easy on you. <laughs> thanks. It's my first time. Um, uh, my mechanics place is a unique business plan where we provide the services for people to work on their vehicles themselves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the business is kind of an a la carte business and uh, U-Hauls are providing a, a huge service to the community by giving the uh, opportunity for our customers to get their cars there and to and from there with the uh, car haulers and uh, and uh, and auto dollies um, it, it it provides us a service to the whole community as you can see we have a, a petition there of, of uh, many names of our customers and neighbors around us everybody seems to approve of us we haven't really seen any incidents of uh, increasing crime or or anything like that um, I, I really don't know what else to say. Um, we have a privacy fence up there. Um, the uh, U-Haul services are, uh, we have the opportunity for a 24 hour drop off. So having it enclosed and locked behind a gate would be detrimental to its operation. So. I see. Um, no, I don't have anything else to say. Well, that's, that's a perfectly good presentation, Mr. Robo. You did well. well thank you. Uh, we will see if there's any questions for you from any of the commissioners. Do you have any questions for our petitioner? Ms. Smiley. Uh, so I'm understanding that you're going to ask for a waiver to not put up a fence, right? Uh, there, there are, there's currently, um, they have these poles that are sunk in. Oh, I see them on the picture up there. Yeah, and okay. those, those prevent vehicles from being pulled from, from the lot. Okay. Um, other than that, there, there is a gate there, um, but we don't close it because of the 24-hour access. Okay, and your, none of your neighbors have had a complaint about any of this and, mm -hmm. and how long has it been going on um we yeah we inadvertently entered into the contract with them unknowing that we would have to go through this process and we're just trying to comply to the requirements of the city of livonia um, but we've been operating for about two years now with no incident with no, no incident thank you sir thank you mr chair thank you Ms. smiley mr ventura uh, mr chair mrs smiley asked my question so <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. she stole your questions all right do we have any other questions for our petitioner, Mr. Sure. Bongiro? How are you? Uh, I do. You and I, I, I met you there a couple weeks ago. You kind of walked me around. In the back um, lot, you had said that some of the vehicles stay there for extended periods of time, and you, you don't want that because you want to see those vehicles being repaired and taken out That's in correct. a timely manner. And you were t also talking about maybe instituting a policy where there's a time limit whether it be 30, 60 days, and then they've got to get it out or you're going to take it out. Are we, you still considering that? Yeah, we, well, what we do is we maintain an open dialogue with our customers for their needs. We do offer them opportunities to do some short-term storage outside while they're waiting for an engine or a transmission or some, some component of their vehicle. Um, it's been our experience in the three and a half years that we've been there that once in a while somebody you know, is not honest, and mm -hmm. I end up with a, a vehicle. So we, uh, so we now offer uh, the storage for 30 days, and then we review that at the end of 30 days if they still need it, and it, it'll go up to. I don't know. I, I, 
I haven't really gone beyond 90 days because after 90 days, I feel like they're being um, disingenuous, and so we we uh, contact Livonia Towing, they mark it, and, and we have it removed from the property. So okay. yeah. we were asked not to have a junkyard back there, and it's yeah. my determination it not to do better. so. It looks better. I was there today. It looks yeah. Better than even a couple well, we're years. currently involved in spring cleanup, so we're trying to get all the vegetation knocked back and the, the parking lot covered and all that. Okay, one more question. If, if you go to council for the waiver on the fence and they want a fence, is that a deal breaker for you or are you gonna do it? Um, this is my dream, so no, it's not a deal breaker. You do it, okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Brongiro. Any other questions for our petitioner? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Uh, Roboa, just one question. Uh, I think we asked this at the study meeting, but I wanted to get it on the record. What percentage would you say of uh, your total business is, is based on the U-Haul uh, operation? Uh, currently, U-Haul is running right, roughly around 25% of our revenue. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? Sir, please feel free to come forward. Good evening, and again, we'll just ask your name and address as well. Uh, Nick Nichols, 50547 South Tyler, Plymouth, Michigan. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. And what would you like to say? Uh, I'd just like to add that I've been a longtime customer of Jay's. Um, I've worked in my vehicles at his garage, and as far as the issue that comes up about the storage behind his building, um, I have had dialogue with him about mine as my vehicle was stored there for an extended period of time. Um, I just wanted to add that he does talk to all of his customers about his vehicles. He has no intention of keeping a junkyard back there. Um, I recently moved my vehicle out, um, and it is relatively organized back there, as you saw recently also. Um, so that's, that's all I wanted to add. That's all. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. And is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak on this item? I don't see anybody else. Mr. Rabot, we always like to give you the final word. Is there anything else you would like to add? You're all set? Okay, good. Uh, with that, uh, we'll close the public hearing and a motion will be in order. Mr. Chair? Mrs. Smiley. Uh, yeah, I would like to make an approving resolution that the request for the outdoor storage and rental of U-Haul trucks at 35655 Plymouth Road is hereby approved subject to city council approval and the following conditions. That the outdoor storage of U-Haul trucks and trailers shall be limited to the designated location as shown on the site plan received by the Planning Commission on March the 29th of 2019. That the outdoor storage and the rental of U-Haul trucks at this location shall be permitted providing that the zoning ordinance standard set forth in section 11.03 K6 requiring that the display area be enclosed with a fence is waived by the City Council that the total number of trucks and trailers to be stored and displayed outdoors at this location shall not exceed 20 and that no trucks or trailers shall be displayed closer than 20 feet to the front uh, to the front lot line that all light fixtures shall not exceed 20 feet in height and shall not be aimed and, sh and shall uh, be aimed and shielded to minimize the stray light trespassing across the property lines and glaring into the adjacent roadways. That the rear parking lot shall be cleaned to the satisfaction of the inspection department, including the removal of all debris and weeds and trimming of existing trees along the back wall. Um, all dead, dying, and deceased plant material shall be removed and replaced with a new plant material, and all gaps along the rear property line where evergreen trees or shrubs were previously removed shall be replaced. That unless approved by the proper local authority, any type of exterior advertising such as promotional flags, streamers, or sponsor vehicles designed to attract the attention of passing motorists shall be prohibited. That there shall be no outdoor storage of auto parts, scrap material, waste petroleum products, junk, unlicensed or inoperable vehicles, or other similar items in connection with this operation. That no LED light ban or exposed neon shall be permitted on the site, including but not limited to the building or around the windows. That no overhead speakers will be used inside or outside of this building. That only conforming signage is approved with this petition 
and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. That the specific plan referenced in this approved resolution shall be submitted to the inspection department at the time an occupancy permit is applied for and pursuant to section 19.10 of ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia, this approval is valid for a period of one year only from the date of approval by the city council and unless a building permit is obtained, this approval shall be null and void at the expiration of said period. Um, the, further, the Planning Commission recommends the approval of a conditional agreement limiting this waiver use to this user only, with the provision to extend this waiver use approval to a new user only upon the approval of the new user by the City Council. Is there support? Support. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Mrs. Smiley, supported by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Bajero. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chair Walshaw. Votes aye. Motion passes, and we'll go on the city council with an approving recommendation. Thank you for coming tonight. And uh, before we go into item number two on our agenda, I, in my enthusiasm of getting started on the agenda, I did neglect to note that uh, item number five on our agenda, which is the sign request for Bob's discount furniture, uh, the petitioners asked that that item be postponed to a future meeting. So if anybody's here for that item, uh, it will not be discussed this evening. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go back to our regularly scheduled agenda and item number two. And that is petition 2019-04-02-05, submitted by Piano Shoe Properties, LLC, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to section 10.03J of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance number 543 as amended, to utilize a microbrewer license, including redeveloping the site, expanding the parking lot, and modifying the exterior facade of the existing building in connection with the operation of a brew pub, Piano Shoe Brewery at 27717 and 27719 Seven Mile Road, located on the south side of Seven Mile Road between Inkster Road and Harrison Avenue in the northeast section, uh, northeast quarter of section 12. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Tormina. Thank you. Again, this is a request to operate a microbrewery in connection with the redevelopment and reuse of a site that is located at the southeast corner of Seven Mile and Deering. Uh, this site is about a quarter mile west of Inkster Road. It's a relatively small site. Uh, it's under half an acre. It's 0.45 acre. It has 115 feet of frontage on Seven Mile Road and roughly 170 feet uh, along Deering. The zoning is C1 local business and relatively new to the C1 district regulations is a provision under section 10.03 J which allows establishments having liquor licenses including Class C small distiller and microbrewer. Licensed microbrewers, which uh, produce less than 1,000 barrels per year, can qualify to sell direct to licensed Michigan retailers. They can also sell beer to consumers for consumption on the premises, as well as for takeout and offer free samples. Um, there are a number of special requirements that pertain to this, uh, this type of use. Uh, the first is that they must not be located within 1,000 feet of any other such licensed establishment. There are two Class C licensed businesses located within 1,000 feet of this uh, site. Uh, the first one is on the north side of Seven Mile. It's about 267 feet west, and that is the Corsi's Restaurant and Banquet Hall. And then uh, located on the south side of Seven Mile Road, about 400 feet west of the site, is the Up North Craft Bar, which is the former Sands Lounge. So the City Council will have to waive uh, this, special, uh, this uh, separation requirement. Another requirement under section 10.03 J3 uh, specifies that no microbrewer shall be located within 400 feet of a church or a school. Uh, there are no churches or schools within this 400 feet. Um, the site contains, as you can see from the existing <coughs> survey, a small commercial building as well as a parking lot that is located at the north end of the property adjacent to Seven Mile Road. The balance of the site is undeveloped and maintained as a lawn. 
The existing building will remain and will be used mainly for the brewing operations as well as for indoor seating for customers. Additional seating would be available in an outdoor beer garden that would be created on the east side of the building. This beer garden would measure roughly 36, 36 feet by 59 feet for a total of 2,124 square feet. The existing parking lot, which is located adjacent to the east side of the building, would remain, but that only contains two parking spaces. So a new parking lot uh, would be created on the south portion of the property, and that would contain a total of 19 parking spaces. Access to this new parking lot would be from a single driveway located off of Deering Street. And there's a six foot wide sidewalk that would connect the new parking lot to the side of the building. Screening would be provided along the south property line between the new parking lot and the adjacent residential property. And that would consist of a seven foot high wall as well as landscaping. A new concrete approach would be uh, created off of Deering. Uh, this is on the south side of the building and this would uh, mainly be used to service uh, the rear of the building's uh, service areas. Uh, which includes a uh, loading zone as well as a dumpster enclosure. Inside the building would be uh, the brewing, uh, which would occur at the back half of the site uh, or the building. Uh, there would be a small bar area uh, as well as room for additional customer seating as well as bathrooms. The area located in the front part of the building would have tables and seating for 18 uh, persons. Uh, the bar area would have uh, nine bar stools and the remaining back half of the building, as I indicated, would contain the brewing area. Uh, through the bar uh, would be an access door that would go right directly to the beer garden. Uh, the beer garden itself would be a combination of pavers and grass. Uh, this area would be enclosed by a four and a half foot high decorative metal fence. There would be seating available for an estimated 30 persons. Uh, between the parking lot and the um, beer garden uh, would be uh, a bioretention area. This would be used to manage uh, the site's stormwater runoff. There's an additional smaller bioretention area that is shown in the northeast corner of the site. Um, in terms of parking, customer seating would include 27 inside the building and 30 within the beer garden. Uh, so the required parking would be 24 spaces. Uh, this includes one space for every two seats inside the building and one space for every three seats outside uh, the building, uh, but this does not include employees. So the 21 parking spaces that are shown altogether on the site uh, results in a deficiency of three parking spaces at least. Uh, the petitioner has indicated in his letter to you that he is in, uh, pursuing an arrangement with the neighboring commercial business uh, to rent parking spaces. Looking at the building itself, the exterior would be modified. Uh, it's currently a, a, a masonry block, so that would be repaired and uh, repainted. There would be an existing mansard roof that's on the front of the building uh, that would be removed. A new door uh, and new window would be installed on the east elevation, as well as a new canopy that would be over a portion of the sidewalk. And this is a rendering showing what the building would look like, uh, generally speaking, uh, after, the, uh, after the renovations are uh, complete. In terms of landscaping, a uh, fully detailed landscape plan was submitted uh, with the application. Uh, green space on the site uh, constitutes roughly 40% of the property, so that's well above the 15% that we look for as a minimum. Uh, the majority of the new plant material would be located uh, both on the north and the south sides of the beer garden for screening, as well as within the bioretention areas, and then behind the building to screen the service area, and then lastly along the south property line in conjunction with the wall. That wall, as I indicated, uh, has been modified. Originally, it was shown as five feet in height. Uh, that's been increased to seven feet in height, although we do not have details at this time. Uh, and lastly, in terms of signage, uh, this uh, business would be allowed a one wall sign uh, equal to uh, one square foot per one foot of uh, frontage. Uh, there is no ground sign allowed uh, due to the non-conforming setback of the building. So any additional signage would have to go back before the Zoning Board of Appeals for approval. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll be happy to read out the uh, correspondence. Yes, please. First is a letter from engineering uh, dated April 15th that reads, in accordance with your request, the engineering division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed waiver use at this time. The existing parcels are assigned the addresses of 27717 and 277197 Mile Road. The legal descriptions provided appear to be correct and should be used in conjunction with this petition. 
The existing parcels are currently serviced by public utilities and no disruption to the existing service leads is planned. The developer has been in contact with this department and is aware of the site plan requirements, including stormwater detention and the requirements for certifying that the storm sewer outlet has the available capacity to handle the additional flows from the site. It should be noted that the developer will also be required to obtain Wayne County permits for any work within the seven mile road right of way. We will provide a detailed review once full engineering site plans have been submitted for approval. A letter is signed, uh, signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next is a letter from our uh, Livonia Fire and Rescue dated April 22nd and signed by Keith Bow, Fire Marshal. He indicates he has uh, no objection to the proposal. A similar letter of no objection was provided by the Division of Police dated April 16th and signed by Brian Lee, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. Next is a letter from the Inspection Department uh, dated April 30th that reads, uh, pursuant to your request, the above reference petition has been reviewed and the following is noted. Number one, parking spaces shall be 10 feet wide by 20 feet deep and double striped. And two, the commission and or council may wish to address exterior lighting on this property. This department has no further objections to this petition. That letter is signed by Jerome Hanna, Director of Inspection. We have a, a letter of no objection from the Department of Finance. Is there are no outstanding amounts receivable, general or water and sewer? Uh, that letter is signed by Colleen Coleman, Chief Accountant. Uh, the Office of Treasurer indicates that at this time there are no taxes due and therefore they have no objections to the proposal. That's signed by Linda Scheel uh, and dated April 11th. Uh, Department of Assessment uh, ha has a letter dated April 12th that reads, the petition submitted by Piano Shoe Properties LLC involves two individual tax parcels. The current owner on Livonia's tax part records is Seven Mile Livonia Center LLC. If the ownership has transferred, Michigan law requires the buyer to bring a copy of the property transfer or affidavit to the local assessor's office. The owner of the property will need to apply for a combination of the two parcels in conjunction with this petition. And that letter is signed by Mary Chilano. Uh, next is a letter from uh, the Division of Police, our Special Services Bureau dated April 17th. And the letter reads, we reviewed the plan submitted by Piano Shoe Properties, LLC, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to section 10.03J. After conferring with the chief of police, we have identified the following issues for consideration. Both Corsi's Restaurant and Banquet Hall, located at 279107 Mile, and Up North Craft Beer, located at 280017 Mile, hold an active Class C liquor license and are well within the 1,000 foot separation requirement distance of the proposed site. We ask that the City Council give significant consideration for approval or denial of this waiver use request. That letter is signed by Jeff Ronain, uh, Special Services Bureau. Uh, and lastly, we have a letter uh, from a resident, um, Cheryl Kasich. It's dated May 9th and it reads as follows. Dear Planning Commission members, I am writing concerning the request for waiver use approval in the above mentioned petition. My family and I are not able to attend the hearing scheduled for May 14th as we are scheduled to be out of town and therefore I am writing to voice our concerns. Our property located at 19004 Deering Street adjoins the property being considered in this petition on the southern property line. My family has owned and resided on this property since approximately 1970. We are a very close family and our summers are spent together outdoors barbecuing, swimming, and entertaining for birthdays, holidays, and weekends. I have young granddaughters who spend the entire summers in our backyard. We love being Livonia residents and plan to continue so. Our concerns with the file petition and the proposed development are safety, privacy, and noise slash lighting intrusion. A microbrewery with an outdoor beer garden area will have many people coming and going, but more importantly, they will mostly be staying in an outdoor area drinking alcoholic beverages. We have been advised that there will be outside games provided for entertainment, such as cornhole and, and Jenga. As you know, when people are drinking at a bar, they tend to be loud. This is fine for most, unless it is 12 a.m. and you happen to live right next door to the beer garden, as my home will be if this is permitted. The plans indicate that parking is located directly in front of the proposed five foot high false brick screen wall. We feel because a major portion of the parking will be against the part of our property, which is our outdoor living area, where our family will be enjoying outdoor activities. A five foot wall with nothing between the wall and the vehicles would not block guests of the brewery from viewing those activities, especially from tall trucks. 
or possibly accessing our backyard. We request that a seven foot wall be erected with the addition of tall shrubbery evergreens planted on our side of the wall and the existing chain link fence be removed. Although we would request that the initial expense of the shrubbery along the wall be borne by the brewery, in the spirit of cooperation, these plantings would be installed and maintained by us. If a seven foot wall is not possible, we would request that there be a grassy area with tall shrubbery and evergreens planted on the brewery side between the vehicle parking and the five foot wall to dissuade unwanted viewing and curiosity and to buffer any noise from the vehicles as well as lights from the vehicles and building. We also request due to the fact that we have a deep lot that the proposed grassy areas at the east end of the parking lot also include some type of tall shrubbery evergreen that would block the noise of the vehicles and beer garden activities. I spoke with Mark Tarmina and received correspondence from Andrew Schumacher who both indicate that the hours of operation were going to be only on weekends and would close at reasonable hours for a neighborhood. However, during those hours, the outdoor guests will be playing games and drinking. That, we believe, necessitates the seven foot wall and all the grassy areas with shrubbery and evergreens sufficient to shield our backyard use. We believe if the balance of the proposed plans are adhered to, that hours of operation are within limits deemed reasonable for a residential neighborhood and as specified in Mr. Schumacher's correspondence and our requested modifications are implemented, it will provide for a more agreeable existence between Piano Shoe Brewery and our home. Thank you. And again, that letter is signed by Cheryl Kasich, who gives her address as 19004 Deering, Livonia, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tormina. Any questions for our planning staff? Mr. Ventura. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Tormina, uh, are you aware of any uh, factor that would prevent the um, retention area in the parking lot to be switched. In other words, that the retention area be adjacent to the home and the parking area be adjacent to the beer garden. Is there any thing that, that you're aware of that would preclude that? Um, the one uh, factor, and uh, I don't know if it's shown on any of these plans, is the uh, proximity of the storm outlet from the bioretention number two. That's the main area that you're referring to. And I know that the outlet for that bioretention area is due west. Uh, whether or not there is a, a limitation by moving that further to the south uh, based on the grades of either the property or the um, slope of the, uh, of the pipe, I don't know. So I'm, I'm not aware of a of, of that kind of a uh, something that would prevent that. The, the, so it's possible. It, it, it may be possible from a, a, from a hydrologic standpoint. Right. Yes. Great. Um, and there are a number of site plans uh, in our packages tonight, uh, Mr. Tormina, one of which shows a heavily planted area adjacent to what I'm assuming is a seven foot wall. So what site plan are we really looking at? Are we looking at the site plan with the plantings? Yes, so, and I think um, we'll hear this from the petitioner shortly, but they have made, uh, or he has made changes based on the um, communication that he's had with the neighbor to the south. And in response to her concerns, a seven foot wall has been, uh, has replaced the original five foot wall. That's a, that would be a masonry wall. And in addition, there's a, uh, been some shift uh, to the uh, parking lot, uh, four feet, uh, to provide some additional space for planting shrubs on the north side of that wall, I believe is what is shown. I know she indicates that she'd prefer those on the south side of the wall on her property, but these shrubs are shown on the north side of the wall. I've also indicated to Mr. Schumacher that they could, um, they could achieve at least four more feet of, of distance separation uh, by um, reducing the depth of those parking stalls from 20 feet to 18 feet on both sides uh, because there's no interference with sidewalks. That's something that we do allow. So despite what inspection indicated that the minimum size had to be 10 by 20, in this case, we could live with 10 by 18 foot uh, deep spaces uh, because there's, again, no interference with, uh, with public walkways in this case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Any other questions for our planning staff? Mr. Chair. Mr. Kermack, no. Mark, is, is a seven-foot wall a typical? I, I don't remember seeing hearing much about seven-foot walls. You know, we see them occasionally, um, but uh, the standard, uh, generally speaking, is five feet, uh, but the ordinance does specify, specify five to seven feet. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caramagno. Any other questions? I don't see any. The petitioner, I believe, is here. There we are. Good evening, sir. And again, we'll ask that you start with your name and address. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. My name is Andrew Schumacher. My address is 17555 Dolores Street, Livonia, Michigan, 48152. Well, good evening, Mr. Schumacher. Is there anything else you would like to present uh, about your business that you haven't already heard? Uh, yes, I do have a kind of a usage intent that I think will help answer some questions. Please go ahead. So the primary intent of this property is to manufacture beer for sales through distribution. And as Mr. Tormina already stated that under the MLCC license, a qualified market brewer under a thousand barrels of production per year can sell directly to retailers. The brewing process that we would use would actually produce relatively few fumes and waste. The humidity would be controlled by the HVAC system and the waste grain would be handled separately from the normal trash. Brewing, fermentation, storage, and packaging would all occur in the building, not outside on the property. Uh, as part of the license, as he said, free samples, on-premise consumption, and takeout purchases are allowed as well. Our vision with the tap room is to have a family-friendly space for friends to gather and enjoy spending time. We envision people playing board games and card games as a way to pass the time as they talk. I grew up traveling to Germany with my family. Um, half of them are from Germany and live there. And this idea for this space is influenced by the beer garden culture there where people can gather. It's a community space where all ages are welcome and it's a place to mingle and sit outside when the weather is nice. Uh, the purpose of the outdoor seating area is to provide a spot for everyone to sit uh, so everyone can be outside if they choose, not necessarily to double the amount of seats we have on the site. To accommodate the number of seats, we have reached out to adjacent business owners to talk about renting space from their parking lots. We think they are agreeable. Uh, we're still in communication, but as their hours are during the daytime, ours would be in the evening and night. There should not be an overlap or a pressure for that space taking away from their business. The hours of operation, we are planning to go Thursday through Sunday, pretty much in the evening on Thursday and Friday, and then noon to evening on Saturday and Sunday. The outdoor hours will end by 10 o'clock every night. And the indoor hours on Friday and Saturday would go all the way till midnight, otherwise 10 o'clock. As for noise and disturbances, we are not going to have any outdoor music or any live music. We might play some quiet ambient music inside. Um, lighting will be directed away from neighboring properties and try to go to the center as much as possible uh, or use ground lighting for path illumination. So, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Schumacher. And I believe you told us a little bit at your study meeting, but uh, can you tell us a little about why you've decided to get into this business or your background in this, this industry? Yeah, we are interested in it because both myself and Nathan, who couldn't make it today from a medical issue, we got our degrees at the University of Michigan through chemical engineering. And so it's a very interesting craft for us because it's a combination of the kind of art of brewing with the science of chemical engineering. It just happens to be something that we can enjoy and share with people and have a good time um, experimenting with. All right, thank you, Mr. Schumacher. Is there any questions for our petitioner? Uh, we'll start with Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, first of all, I love the idea of better brewing through chemistry. I think thank that's you. a <laughs> wonderful uh, plan. Um, and I applaud you for working to address the concerns of the neighbor. I do have, I guess, one just question on the beer garden. You commit to in here that you don't plan to have any outdoor music. That's correct. So, so while the games are going on, no, you don't want to have anything going on out there. No, we're not planning okay. on it. Just, it doesn't seem like a, 
a good mix, but I guess you know your business better than I do. Um, the, uh, um, the lighting, uh, I think I saw one of the pictures here um, where you were going to have, is are you going to have like lighting strung across? Did I, did I see that? Yeah, correctly? they're going to be strung across on 10 foot posts, so out of reach and jump height. Okay, so it would be high enough where you don't have to worry about that, and it'll be right. low enough where it won't interfere with the, the neighbors. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Long. Any other questions for our petitioner? Uh, yeah, Mr. Ventura. <clears throat> Mr. Schumacher, um, you've worked hard to answer a lot of questions that we presented to you at the study session, <clears throat> but I'd like you to address the reason that you have the parking next to the neighbor and the and the retention pond, which is basically landscaping, mm -hmm. next to the beer garden, and why that can't be switched. Have I you investigated that? Yes. I personally thought it made more sense to push the bioretention closer to the neighbor and keep the parking in the middle. The site engineer who drafted these drawings thought it was better for the bioretention to be in the center for grading plans to be able to manage the rainwater the most efficiently. I have asked him since. Um, since the study meeting, whether it can be put on the south side again, and he said it wasn't possible, just due to the grading and drainage. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Clearly, they're chemical engineers, not civil engineers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bonjura. He had one uh, question. It kind of goes back to Mark. Um, across the street, there's a beer store. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's been closed. I don't know. Everything's up. It, it looks like, if you look, it looks like it's still open, but I, I don't think it is, Mark. Is that, is that business no longer there? And if so, is anybody going to open it up? And I mean, obviously, there was beer right, right across the street. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is that active or is that? Yeah, okay. I, and no, the answer is no. You're referring to, I know, the, um, uh, the building. I think it even, might even have the sign still up there. It, it does. It looks active. The, the license left that location okay. a long time ago, and there's no plans that I'm aware of to bring a license back uh, there. Uh, that would not be contrary to the ordinance relative to the separation because that would be uh, for... Um, uh, consumption off the premises solely. So that was an SDM license, I think, that was at that location previously. Um, not, it was not for, for um, uh, it was only for the sale of packaged uh, beer and wine products. Gotcha. Just one other look. It looks like you're saving the mature trees on the site. Look, yes, we want to. It's nice. It, it's a great plan. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Bongero. Any other questions for our petitioner? I don't see any other questions for our petitioner, so we'll go to our audience and give them a chance to speak, and we'll uh, have you back up here uh, shortly, Mr. Schumacher. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item, please come forward. We have a few people in the audience wishing to speak on this item. Either way. Either, either podium's fine. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, I am, my name is Kevin Doran. My personal residence is 9837 Sunset uh, in Livonia. The zip code is 48150. Thank you, sir. I am here representing the property immediately east of it, the Livonia Masonic Temple, which is at 27705 Seven Mile Road. And our parking lot shares the lot line with the proposed site. Yes. And parking is our main concern. We, um, it proves uh, when we have larger events, our parking is already inadequate. And what I'm hearing uh, this evening is uh, this site plan has a deficiency in parking. If the parking isn't, and I know the ordinance doesn't require it, but if it hit, their parking isn't at capacity, we're worried that the patrons will use our parking lot. I see. And we, we don't want to be bad neighbors. And uh, we're 
really don't want to gate off our parking lot. That creates a major inconvenience for us. Uh, and uh, we have no desire to go to the draconian methods at stores and other, I mean, our, our goal is to be a good neighbor in the city. Uh, we have, uh, and, uh, but we need to figure out a way that our parking lot doesn't become their parking lot. And uh, that's our major concern. Um, I missed, there was a blurb in the mic system for the outdoor seating, and I missed the total number that was planned for outdoors. I think Mr. Tormina can uh, refresh your memory on those numbers. Uh, do you have those, Mark? Mr. Schumacher has indicated that seating would be available for 30 people um, in the outdoor portion of the uh, operation. Okay, and Thank I you, remember a parking number in the low 20s. Uh, so we're, that creates our concern that our parking lot will become used as their parking lot by, you know, not by their desire, but it's conveniently located if things aren't done to make it inconvenient for his uh, patrons. Sure. And uh, so that's our major concern. We, as a organization, have no for or against the use of the site other than we were hoping at one time to buy it for increasing our parking but the owner of the property wasn't willing to go that route i see <laughs> um so that is that's our major concern and i thank you for allowing me to uh, address this commission um and if possible can I get these site plan, a copy of these site plans? Yes, you to can. To share with uh, members of our lodge? Yes, you can, sir. Uh, you can contact our planning department. Uh, you can call City Hall and ask for the planning department, and they can email or, or get you copies of anything that you would need. Uh, so you can, you can call uh, at 734-466-2200. Four six six twenty two hundred, and just just call that during the day and uh, ask for planning, and oh, they, that's the city number. Yeah, that's yeah. why it looked full, so familiar. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mr. Schumacher will give you provide a copy. Yeah, Mr. Schumacher may be able to have a copy for you as well. So, but in any case, everything is full is freely available. So we'll make sure that you get a copy from either the petitioner or from the city. Um, just as I think we do, if someone has a question, I just had one question. What are your hours of operation? Uh, well, it varies. Uh, we're predominantly uh, during the week, but we have uh, our large social events, um, which are maybe six to eight times a year, will happen on a Saturday. And we, our parking is uh, we end up parking down the street in the neighborhood. Uh, so if any cars drifted from uh, next door, that would uh, be a major problem. But overall, it wouldn't uh, necessarily be an issue other than we would want to uh, dissuade people from using our parking lot for those instances when we do need it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Doran, just, just a couple um, uh, comments based on what you said. We'll, and we'll have the petitioner come forward and talk to the, about the parking issue a little bit more to answer your question about his intent in terms of working with the neighbor to his west, I believe, to uh, get a, a shared parking arrangement. But um, uh, just so you know, when, when we talk about the number of uh, patrons that may be inside or outside the building, we have a formula of 
uh, a ratio of either two to one or three to one uh, that we use to determine if the parking's adequate, assuming that not every single person that comes there is gonna come in a separate vehicle, so. I understand that. So. I, I just know that uh, there will be occasions when mm -hmm. a lot of people come in one vehicle and with the immediate proximity of our parking lot. Sure. I mean, I know things will be done with the lot line, but currently there is a skeleton of a three-foot fence right. that is easily stepped over by the, an average height uh, person. And, uh, and there's no barriers in the front to prevent walking 15 feet and then you're in the property next door. Right, we'll, we'll talk to the petitioner about it and try to, to uh, uh, hopefully calm your, your nerves on that one. Oh. Uh, Mr. Del Mr. Long? Mr. Dorn, um, do you have a wall on the south side of your property? And if so, how tall is it? On the south side, we... Yeah. Where it, it's a chain link. We, yeah, we have only fencing. The only walls are is our building. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else, uh, Mr. Doran, while he's here? Yeah, Mr. Bongiro? Would you have any willingness to talk to Mr. Schumacher about... Oh, we're, we're or no? in, the in the nature of being a good neighbor. We're willing to talk and uh, work work things out. For but, parking, right? Just yeah. Okay. Um, it's just we receive a letter and the only information we have is a article in the Livonia Observer. So right. we're here to address our concerns and where we can go forward, absolutely. So if he approached you, you would consider an agreement oh, on parking? we could, uh, I, I imagine we could work something out, but I needed to, uh, in order to get that process started, I needed to be here to voice the concerns. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you, Mr. Bongero. And thank you, Mr. Doran, for coming. That's exactly why we have these meetings. It's, it's an opportunity for you to come and, and express your views and your concerns, the, the things that are on your mind, and to also see this item for the first time as well. So uh, hopefully we can answer your questions and, and give you some peace of mind and also open those doors to uh, dialogue with the petitioner and, and with the city if you need any information. So, so thank you for coming. Thank you. We appreciate it. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak on this item? Sir, feel free to come forward. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Ivan Miet. I live at 18811 Bosch, which would be almost directly kitty corner to where this proposed uh, microbrewery is being built. Uh, I'm directly behind the Masonic Temple. Okay. Uh, my main objection is to a wall, any kind of wall that you're going to put back to. I know it's city ordinance, whenever there's a business there, they want a wall up at least five feet. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem being with what putting a wall up there is we have like uh, Mother Nature has created a, a, like a wind tunnel that goes back there and brings a nice breeze down right through the neighborhood and stuff and everything, which keeps all the houses and stuff and everything cool and refreshing and keeps us in the old time neighborhood deal and stuff and everything. So uh, I, Masonic Temple and the uh, councils is trying to be forcing them to build that five foot wall and stuff. And, We've all in the neighborhood have supported not, not to have that wall put up for basically that purpose. Uh, I have no objection against the microbrewery or uh, you know, what he intends to do, but I was wondering if there was any other way we could design something where it wouldn't block off the airflow and stuff and everything. And also I know that uh, he's gonna have to put up some security lightings and stuff out there at night. And, I'm just wondering how far that light's going to spread out through the neighborhood and stuff and everything. And so, you know, I I don't believe it'll be a really noisy establishment, but, you know, at any time you get to gathering together people, having a good time, it's going to get a little loud once in a while. But, you know, we can put up with once in a while. 
and stuff. So, but uh, still, I still like to keep the antiquated, antique uh, uh, position of the neighborhood and stuff and everything. So. Right. You don't want to see any any significant changes that would block the uh, the wind. Yeah, right. and stuff. You know. So we've had it. Since I've, I've lived there for 40 years now and stuff, and it's it's been a, a fairly quiet and peaceful neighborhood and stuff and everything. And I like to keep it. And plus, you know, if his business is successful in doing what he plans on doing and stuff, which I hope he is, but he is going to have an overflow problem with the parking and stuff. And that's eventually going to end up not only maybe into the Masonic Temple or across the street, but definitely down the street of Deering and stuff and everything. So, because, you know, people are a creature of habit. They're going to, they're going to take the shortest route possible to, to get to where they're going. Yes, so, they do. Think, so. uh, other than that, I have no other uh, misgivings about that. Well, thank you, sir, for coming. And I, I don't believe there's any new walls uh, proposed as part of this. Uh, so I, I think you're OK there. And, and in terms of lighting, um, we're always very careful to make sure that, that businesses don't shine lights outside their property. And now with the new LED lighting, it makes it much easier to focus lighting onto the property so it doesn't shine into your backyard or anyone else's. So I think that'll be OK. All right. Well. But, th it. but thank you for coming and, and expressing your views. We, we really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? I don't see anyone else. Uh, Mr. Schumacher, uh, if you'd like to please come forward. We, again, like to always give you the last word, but also you did have a chance to hear from a couple of residents about uh, parking concerns and, and so on. If you want to address any of those things, you're free to. Sure. I have a couple of comments on both points. As for the overflow parking, as the neighbor mentioned, human nature is going to go to the easiest path and the easiest next one. That would be across the street at the other businesses. There are 17 parking spots there. And then down the street would be the next option if everything was full. The entrance to the Masonic Temple is not so easy to get to. It's actually out on Seven Mile. Uh, around and you have to actually have to go on Goff Street to get into it, I believe. So it's not an obvious entrance and I hope that helps assuage some concerns. I do also plan to have a bike rack there, just of note, um, for people to bike to <coughs> the property because it is that kind of a neighborhood. Uh, I also happen to live in the neighborhood, so I have been taking the idea of someone moving into my neighborhood and starting a brewery very courteously and I'm trying to have as minimal impact on the neighbors as possible. Um, we'll see what we can do and what the city says about wall and maintaining a breeze or maintaining privacy with the neighbors and we'll do everything we can for lighting to be discreet. Okay, well, thank you. We appreciate the, your comments. Is there any additional questions for our petitioner while he's up here? I do Mr. Venture. Yeah. Mr. Schumacher, uh, you say you're working with, your words, um, businesses adjacent to yours uh, on parking. I have reached out. Do you have any, so, do you have any contractual commitments that will guarantee you that your customers can park on somebody else's land? Not at this time. How far away do you think you are? Likely two to three weeks. And what happens if you're unable to secure that. Let's let's just say, people you're working with finally say, "Well, uh, we want to we want a rent. The, uh, let's say an uneconomic for you rent mm -hmm. for space, and you walk away from it. Then what? We would have to scale down our seating. Do you, do you think you can have uh, some indication, some confirmed indication? of your arrangements with adjacent property owners for parking by the time you get to city council? I hope to, yes. And I hope to work through the city to understand who those business owners are instead of working through the renters to get to the landlords. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Any other questions for our petitioner? Uh, Mr. Tormino. Uh, regarding the issue of parking, um, the prepared resolution 
does recognize the fact that there is a deficiency. So if the, uh, depending on, on uh, what direction the Planning Commission would like to go on this, whether they would direct him either to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, or scale back the, the parking, the, the resolution um, makes the adjustment to match the number of parking spaces that are currently available on site. Um, you could append to that, you know, either an option of either if he to, to go back to the original plan seating count, should he secure the agreement uh, with the neighboring businesses um, or secure a variance uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. But I just wanted to point that out, that the resolution as we've prepared it does make a slight adjustment. And what that is, is 24 seats inside the brewery building that which require 12 parking spaces and 27 in the beer garden that would require nine parking spaces. And so that would bring the total up to 21. Now that doesn't include employees, but I think uh, Mr. Schumacher has indicated <coughs> that there are only two employees. At uh, this time, yep. Mostly, yeah. All right. So very limited number of employees, so. Thank you for that information, Mark. Uh, and I don't know if he has any objection to that. If that if that's okay with him, you know, if that seating adjustment would would be acceptable to him or not at this point. Well, you know, before we go, if we get any motions, it probably would make sense to ask Mr. Schumacher how he feels on that. If if you would rather, if you're okay with a reduced seating count uh, to have conforming parking, or you would seek a variance from the zoning board. I think that. It's very reasonable to have that reduced parking or, and seating inside and out. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, any other comments, questions before we close this public hearing? All right. With that, I will close the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher, for coming forward again. And I will um, look for a motion on this item. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Long. I'd like to offer an approving resolution. Okay. That the request to utilize a microbrewer license, including redeveloping the site in connection with the operation of a brew pub, Piano Shoe Brewery, at 27717 and 27719 Seven Mile Road is hereby approved, subject to City Council approval and the following conditions. Number one, that the use of a microbrewer license at this location shall be permitted, providing that the zoning ordinance standard set forth in section 10.03 J2 requiring that there be at least 1,000 feet of separation between any other such licensed establishment is waived by the City Council. Number two, that the site plan identified as drawing number C03 dated February 27th, 2019 as revised. Is that the latest one we have? If, if I could interrupt, if it's okay. Um, sure. Mr. Chair. I've got modified language for condition number two if you'd like to skip that and uh, read the rest out and then i'll go we can go back and i can okay tell you so we'll come is. back to number two number three that the maximum customer seating count shall not exceed 24 inside the brewery building requiring 12 parking spaces and 27 in the beer garden requiring nine parking spaces and then further uh despite mr schumacher's um Willingness to limit his seating if he changes his mind. I would like to add a provision that that could increase if uh, if he should decide to chase a waiver and uh, um, get permission from the Board of Zoning Approvals and City Council um, Number four that the hours of operation shall be limited to the hours as set forth in table one in the letter from piano shoe properties LLC dated May 7th 2019 Number five, that the landscape plan identified as LP1 dated January 25th, 2019, prepared by Nagy Devlin Land Design is hereby approved and shall be adhered to except that evergreen trees and or tall evergreen shrubs shall be planted between the wall and the parking lot for additional buffering. Number six, that the underground sprinklers are to be provided for all landscape and sodded areas but not including the bioretention basins, and all planted materials shall be installed to the satisfaction of the inspection department and thereafter permanently maintained in a healthy condition. Um, number seven, that the architectural elevation plan identified as sheet number PD2 dated February 25th, 2019, 
prepared by Joseph Phillips, architect, is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number eight, that the three walls of the trash dumpster area shall be constructed out of building materials that shall complement that of the building. The enclosure gates shall be of solid panel steel construction or durable, long-lasting solid panel fiberglass. The trash dumpster area shall always be maintained and when not in use, closed. Number nine, that this site shall meet either the City of Livonia or the Wayne County Storm Water Management Ordinance, whichever applies, and shall secure any required permits, including soil erosion and sedimentation control permits. Number 10, that all light fixtures shall not exceed 20 feet in height and shall be aimed and shielded to minimize stray light trespassing across property lines and glaring into adjacent roadways. Number 11, that only conforming signage is approved with this petition and any additional signage shall be separately submitted uh, for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number 12, that no LED light band or exposed neon shall be permitted on this site, including but not limited to the building or around the windows. Number 13, that unless approved by the proper local authority, any type of exterior advertising such as promotional flags, streamers, or sponsor vehicles designed to attract the attention of passing motorists shall be prohibited. Number 14, that the specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the inspection department at the time the building permits are applied for. And number 15, pursuant to section 19.10 of ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia, this approval is valid for a period of one year only from the date of approval by the city council and unless a building permit is approved, is obtained, this approval shall be null and void at the expiration of said period. Uh, and then incorporating the new language for number two. And that is uh, referencing the site plan dated May 13th, 2019 as revised, prepared by national consultants and engineering, uh, that that is uh, approved and shall be adhered to except that the parking spaces may be reduced in depth to 18 feet in order to provide uh, four feet of additional green space along the south property line. What he said. All right. <laughs> that uh, sounds reasonable. Is there support for the motion? Support. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Long, supported by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve? Seeing no discussion, uh, Secretary is ready. Please call the roll. Mr. Long. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mr. Bajero. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chair Wilshaw. Votes aye. And the motion passes. We'll go on to City Council with an approving recommendation. You heard a number of items uh, that will be in that recommendation, and we wish you good luck with your project. Thank you, sir. And uh, with that, we move on to item number three on our agenda. Petition 2019-04-02-06. Submitted by Taiji Relax, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to section 11.03U of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance number 543 as amended to operate a massage establishment at 36155 Plymouth Road, located on the south side of Plymouth Road between Yale and Levan Road and the northeast corner of section 32. Okay, Mr. Tormina. Thank you. Uh, this is a uh, request to operate a massage establishment, which falls under uh, the waiver use requirements of section 11.03 U of the zoning ordinance. Uh, this would be located at the LA shopping plaza, which is on the south side of Plymouth Road between uh, Yale and Levan Roads. Uh, the site is about 4.8 acres in size, uh, 480 feet of frontage along Plymouth Road. The shopping center itself is about uh, 36,350 square feet in total uh, area. As you can see, it's an L-shaped uh, plaza with uh, uh, most of the storefronts facing north of Plymouth Road, some face uh, uh, west towards uh, Levan Road. Uh, this particular unit, um, as you can see from this graphic, would be located in uh, what we'll call the uh, west wing of the building. Uh, this uh, unit is about 1,400 square feet in uh, size. Uh, the, um, uh, the layout uh, for the massage establishment uh, shows that uh, there would be several semi-enclosed massage stations. There would be restrooms as well as a, uh, a front counter and lobby uh, area. Uh, this is a change to the plan that was provided to the commission uh, at the study meeting. Uh, the main change, and I believe this is also 
reflected in correspondence that was provided to the um, commission uh, indicating that the, uh, the rooms uh, which were originally fully enclosed uh, with doors um, and walls will now be um, uh, semi-enclosed um, and if necessary curtains could be drawn uh, for uh, what they've indicated would be for their female customers. Um, the, there are a couple special requirements of, that apply to massage establishments. One is that they cannot be located within 400 feet of any other massage establishments. Uh, there are no other massage establishments within 400 feet of this location. The next special requirement applies to the separation between schools, places of worship, state licensed daycare facilities, or public grounds. The Detroit Livonia uh, Christadelphian Ecclesia Church is located about 350 feet from the shopping center property. So uh, this is going to require a waiver from city council. Uh, there are no modifications proposed to the exterior of the building. Uh, they would be allowed uh, one wall sign and parking is more than adequate at LA Plaza to support the proposed use. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll be happy to read out the correspondence. Yes, please. Uh, first is uh, from our engineering division, and it reads uh, the existing parcel is assigned the address of 36083 through 36175 Plymouth Road with the address of 36163 Plymouth Road being assigned to the overall parcel. The existing building is currently serviced by public sanitary storm and water main. The information submitted does not indicate any new connections to the existing utility services, so it appears that there will not be any additional impacts to the existing systems at this time. Should alterations to the existing services be required, the owner will need to provide plans to the department to determine if permits will be required. And should the owner do any work within the Plymouth Road right of way, they will need to contact the Michigan Department of Transportation for any permits that may be required. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Uh, next is a letter of no objection coming from our fire department dated April 22nd and signed by Keith Bowe, Fire Marshal. Similar letter from the Division of Police dated April 16th and signed by Brian Lee, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. A letter of no objection from the Inspection Department dated April 30th and signed by Jerome Hanna, Director of Inspection. A letter of no objection from the Department of Finance signed by Colleen Coleman dated April 16th and a letter of no objection from the Office of the Treasurer dated April 16th and signed by Linda Shield, Treasurer of the City of Livonia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tormino. Do we have any questions for our planning staff? Uh, Ms. Smiley? Uh, Mr. Tormino, could you, uh, uh, so there's no walls, so is this acupressure, is this, mis what, oh, I'm confused on that. I, I think we are going to assume uh, that this is a, a massage establishment. I think that we kind of covered that at the study meeting, uh, that this would fall under the dis definition of uh, massage, so we'll, we'll operate under those, uh, under that premise, and then, um, so, they so, so your question regarding what type of massage therapy. And they, I mean, but they won't it. be in private rooms. They'll be in. I'm going to let the petitioner okay. describe how that. I mean, I have the same information you have, including the plan and the letter. But as I understand it, they've eliminated the, um, the hard wall that would um, fully door. enclose these rooms. Okay. Uh, and instead are proposing some type of. Uh, drawn curtain that they could use uh, at times, but I'll let them describe how that, you know, when, when and how that would apply. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Any other questions for our planning staff? Mm, I don't see any. All right, is our petitioner here? Good evening. You can please come forward to the podium. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, again, we'll evening. ask that you start with your name and address, please. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Zia. Uh, I'm living in uh, 5791 North uh, Fort Road in Kanchen. Okay, thank you, sir. And is there anything else that you would like to add from what you've heard so far about your business? Uh, no. Okay. And do we have any questions for our petitioner? Smiley? Uh, yeah. You run an establishment in Westland, and then this yeah. is going to be identical to that? Yeah, it's identical. The only uh, the, the service we offer is the same. Uh, and, but the floor plan, like you saw there, okay. is a little bit different. In Westland Mall, we just uh, separate by like a, a curve.
curtain or something. Yeah. But for this one, we gonna have uh, individual drywall, but we have like an open area. There is no door or no wall in front. But we do, uh, we may use some uh, curtains for female customer. We do also have like 50% uh, of female and they want some privacy. So uh, we, we may use curtains for female. Cool, so it's a little bit like an emergency room, like how they have those curtains that pull. Yes. So you wouldn't be able to see in there, right? Uh, sorry, what's the question? Uh, so they wouldn't, you would, somebody walking down the hall wouldn't be able to see the person getting? Uh, for female, we use curtains. Okay. But for male, we don't. And um, would, we be, would females or males be wearing a sheet? Or is this like more pressure? It, yeah, they, they will wear a sheet. They wear a sheet. Yeah. But uh, for the back, we'll be exposed like okay. to the sides. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Any other questions? Just one, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Sure, um, Mr. Major. Do the walls between the various uh, stations, do they go to the ceiling or are they, how high are the walls? Uh, it's not go to the ceiling. They do go? No, they do not. They don't? Yeah. How high do you think they are? Uh, I didn't, I'm not sure right now, but I'm thinking about maybe like from the, the TV or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. So maybe about eight feet. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for our petitioner? Mr. Chair. Mr. Caramagno. Why, uh, why, why do you, um, why are you thinking you need a, an establishment in this area? Is there, do you have demand in this area? Is there? Uh, yeah, we do have some demand. Uh, we have some customer right now, they're working uh, for, because Cross Street is for uh, transmission uh, uh, center. And we have some customer there. We also have some uh, customer live in Livonia, and they ask for it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Mrs. Murray. How many employees do you think you're going to have at this? Uh, uh, we're going to start out with two people: one for my uh, my mom, uh, one for uh, uh, we, we also have one people right now is working in Westland Mall. He will be there also. We're gonna start with two, but because we are thinking, uh, because it's a new business, maybe it's kind of slow, uh, but like uh, when the business is on track, we may hire more people to work there. And both the people there are licensed massage therapists? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, okay. any other questions for our petitioner? All right, I don't see any other questions at this time. Uh, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? I don't see anyone in the audience coming forward. So uh, is there anything else that you would like to add before we uh, conclude? Is there any other information uh, that you would like to provide? Uh, yeah, uh, it's a family business. And uh, actually, uh, we start, it's a family business. Uh, we start out uh, like uh, five years ago in Westland Mall. Uh, with thanks, uh, they give me, they give us an opportunity, and we work hard trying to build some reputation. And five years later, and we come to Livonia, <laughs> so we're gonna think maybe it's another good start. So. Uh, just one question: Are you moving your business from the mall to this no, place? No, it's expanding. It's expanding, so you'll yeah. keep it in the mall as well. Yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Good. Thank you, sir. Well, is there, if again, if there's no other questions? I think we've um, gone through that. So we'll, I think we're all set. Thank you, sir. We'll make Thank our you. decision. Uh, we'll close the public hearing and a motion would be in order. Mr. Chair. Mr. Caramagno. I want to make a denying resolution that this request to operate this massage, massage Establishment at 36155 Plymouth Road is denied for the following reasons. Number one, that the petitioners failed to affirmatively show, affirmatively show that the proposed use is in compliance with all of the special and general waiver use standards of the requirements set forth in sections 11.03 and 19.06 of the zoning ordinance number 543. 
Number two, that the proposed use fails to comply with the zoning ordinance set standard set forth in section 11.03 U3, which specifies that no massage establishment shall be located within 400 feet of a church. Number three, that the petitioner has not adequate, adequately established that there is a need for the proposed use in the shopping center. Number four, that the petitioner has not sufficiently demonstrated that the proposed use would be compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding uses in the area. And number five, that the proposed use is contrary to the goals and objectives of the zoning ordinance, which among other things are intended to ensure suitability and appropriateness of uses. Is there support for the motion? Okay, we have a motion to deny by Mr. Caramagno, supported by Mr. Ventura. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mrs. Smiley. I am concerned about its proximity from the church. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm just not feeling comfortable with it yet, I guess is what I'm saying. So um, I'm going to support the denial. Okay. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing no other discussion, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll on the motion to deny. Kara Magna votes aye. Vedra? Aye. Uh, Mrs. Smiley? Aye. Mrs. McHugh? Aye. Mr. Bongero? Aye. Mr. Long? Aye. Chairman Wilshaw? Uh, votes aye, and the motion passes, this is a denying motion for the item. Um, the, Mr. Tormina, uh, this is a waiver use, does? 10 days. Yeah, so, you'll, so the petitioner will have 10 days in which to appeal this decision in writing to city council. And that's where we stand. So with that, uh, thank you for coming tonight. And we will move on to item number four on our agenda. And number four is petition 2019-04-08-06, submitted by Livonia Hotel Group, LLC, requesting approval of all plans required by sections 18.47 and 18.58 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance Number 543 as amended in connection with the proposal to construct a new six-story dual brand hotel, a loft and element at 19265 Victor Parkway located on the west side of Victor Parkway between Seven Mile Road and Pembroke Avenue in the southeast quarter of Section 6. All right, Mr. Tormina. Thank you. Uh, the property that is the subject of this uh, petition is the site of the former uh, Dock Sport Retreat, which is on the west side of Victor Parkway between Seven Mile and uh, Pembroke. Uh, this property is 3.2 acres in size. It includes uh, 193 front, front feet of frontage on Victor Parkway and then approximately 312 feet uh, along the I-275 Expressway. Uh, this site is in the process of being rezoned from C2 General Business to C4 uh, Roman numeral 1, which is high-rise commercial. The C41 designation allows buildings with a maximum height of six stories. Council gave first reading on the rezoning on January 16th, and uh, the second reading and roll call <coughs> are on hold pending a review of the site plan. Um, immediately to the north of this site is the uh, Los Amigos Don Juan restaurant, as well as Dave and Buster's Arcade and Bar. Uh, th that site is zoned, uh, or those properties are zoned C2 General Business. Immediately uh, to the south is a pond uh, that is used uh, for stormwater detention for portions of Victor Corporate Park. And then east across Victor Parkway are residential properties uh, that front along Northland Road. And then, as I indicated, uh, uh, adjacent to the site on the west border is the I-275, uh, I-96 Expressway. Uh, the building that is proposed on the site uh, is uh, somewhat L-shaped. Um, uh, the hotel would be shifted a little bit to the east on the site. Uh, there would be parking, most of the parking located on the north and uh, west sides of the proposed building. There's an existing drive approach off of Victor Parkway that would be shifted slightly to the south that would create a new 24-foot wide main access drive. Secondary access would be available to the site in the northwest corner uh, where uh, it connects to the adjacent 
uh, drive aisles and uh, parking areas that are available at the Dave and Buster's uh, property. There is a shared uh, uh, access and, and parking agreements between these uh, properties. Um, overall, the height of the uh, building would be six stories. Uh, this would uh, bring it to an uh, overall height of roughly 30 or 75 feet to the uh, top edge of the uh, parapet. Uh, within the C4 zoning district, there's a, a limitation of 20% as far as ground coverage. Uh, this site uh, would have a ground coverage of about 22,644 square feet. That equates to uh, a percentage of 16%. Uh, so it, it does conform with that uh, requirement. Um, overall, the building would be roughly 123,900 square feet. It would contain 218 guest uh, rooms. This would include 122 keys for the A loft and then uh, 96 keys for the extended stay, which is the, um, which is the element, and that's on the, uh, the east side of the hotel. So the hotel is, is basically split between the, the two different brands. Uh, the A loft, which is on the uh, the westerly half of the building, and then the element, uh, which is on the easterly half, uh, both of which are six stories in height, both of which would uh, have their own uh, distinct uh, entrances and uh, lobbies, as well as check-in areas. Uh, certain uh, items would be shared between the two hotels. Uh, that would include uh, some of the pool uh, and some of the other um, common elements, exercise room, and, uh, and, and guest services, uh, but then other than that, uh, between, besides being linked between a common hallway, they would uh, basically operate as separate hotels, uh, each having their own separate uh, elevator shafts as well. So uh, requirements in terms of setbacks in the C4 zone, um, uh, for a six-story building, it would be 49 feet for the front yard setback. In this case, they're showing 74.2 feet. Uh, the required uh, setback along the highway would be 55 feet. In this case, they're showing almost 100 feet. And then uh, because this site abuts commercial zoning both to the north and south, there is no required uh, or minimum setback requirement as long as certain uh, building and fire codes are, are adhered to. Um, so the height as well as all the setbacks as well as the maximum ground coverage are all in compliance with the C4 district regulations. Uh, with respect to parking, uh, required parking ho uh, for hotels is one space per guest room plus one space per employee. Uh, the proposed hotel requires roughly 233 total parking spaces. This would include the 218 rooms and an estimated 15 employees. The site plan shows 178 on-site parking spaces. However, uh, this site, as I indicated, does, uh, is subject to a cross-access and par parking agreements with the abutting properties to the north. The plans indicate that there are, are an additional 71 shared spaces that are available. So combined on and off-site uh, available parking would total 249 spaces. Uh, however, since the Dave & Buster's does operate with a deficiency, a variance will be needed for the shortfall of, uh, of parking for this hotel site. Um, trash is fully contained in the south, southern portion of the parking lot. Uh, stormwater would be managed uh, using the existing detention basin on the property to the south. Uh, landscaping, a fully detailed plan is provided. It, it uh, constitutes roughly 21% of the site acreage, so that fully complies with the ordinance in that respect. Um, looking at the design, this has been probably the one issue we've discussed the most leading up to this meeting. Uh, the petitioner is now indicating um, Instead of the EFIS, uh, a combination of cast stone along the uh, portions of the two lower floors and then metal panels for the upper uh, four floors above that. Uh, so all maintenance-free materials, relatively speaking. Uh, you can see the design. It includes combinations of, of the wood pattern or the wood color uh, on uh, some of the uh, um, um, corner elements of the building and then a combination of, of grays uh, for the most part on the balance of the building. Uh, the blue um, feature that is on the top, that is a mechanical uh, penthouse um, and, uh, and that has, uh, I believe, is covered with uh, metal panels as, as well. Um, light fixtures are shown at 30 feet. Typically, we require 20 feet. In this case, they're showing uh, 30 feet. Um, the hotel is allowed a one sign not to exceed one square feet for each foot of building frontage. 
Uh, we don't have details on the ground signage, but they are showing multiple wall signs that will require approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. These mostly relate to the Aloft. At least on these uh, schemes, uh, we're looking at uh, at least three um, signs for the Aloft on top of the mechanical penthouse. Uh, an additional sign that would be located adjacent to their lobby on the north side of the building. The element two has a, uh, a sign located on the upper part of the, uh, uh, the building on uh, what would be the uh, north elevation as well as uh, a sign on the south elevation. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to read out the correspondence. Yes, please. Our first letter uh, is from our engineering department, uh, dated April 24th, and it reads, in accordance with your request, the engineering division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed project at this time. The existing parcel is assigned the address of 19265 Victor Parkway. The legal description provided with the petition appears to be correct and should be used in conjunction with this petition. The existing site is currently serviced by public sanitary and water main that can be extended to the proposed building. Storm sewer detention was previously provided with the original development, so the new project will need to ensure that there is sufficient capacity in the existing system for any additional impervious areas. The submitted drawings do not indicate any proposed utility extensions, so we will review those items when full engineering drawings are submitted to this department. Any work within the I-275 right-of-way may be require permits from the Michigan Department of Transportation, depending on the access and grading required to install any proposed improvements. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next is a letter from our uh, Livonia Fire and Rescue, dated April 30th, and it reads, we have no objections to this proposal with the following stipulations. Number one, subject buildings are to be provided with an automatic sprinkler system, and on-site hydrants shall be located between 50 feet and 100 feet from the fire department connection. Number two, access around the building shall be provided for emergency vehicles with a minimum vertical clearance of 13 feet 6 inches, a turning radius of 53 feet wall to wall, and an inside turning radius of 29 feet 6 inches. Three, a fire access road shall be provided with not less than 20 feet of unobstructed width and have a minimum 13 feet 6 inches of vertical clearance in accordance to 1823411 and 1823412 of NFPA 1 2015. In regards to NFPA 13 2013 edition, fire department connections should be of two and a half Detroit standard thread. Hydrant spacing shall be consistent with City of Livonia ordinances. Fire department access roads shall be designed and maintained to support the imposed loads of fire apparatus and shall provide with an all weather driving surface. This division requests that the entrance drive be posted on both sides, fire lane, no parking. Eight, CO2 detection required for beverage and distribution systems and coolers if tank or tanks are 100 pounds or greater. <coughs> Nine, commercial kitchen hood and duct fire suppression shall be a UL 300 system and comply with NFPA 96. Ten, Knox box uh, must be installed for fire department access. And 11, these issues and other code requirements will be addressed during plan review process. That letter is signed by Keith Bowe, fire marshal. Next is a letter uh, from the Division of Police, Department of Public Safety, indicating that they have no objections to the petition. That letter is signed by Brian Lee, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. Next is a letter uh, from the Inspection Department, dated April 30th, that reads, pursuant to your request, the above reference petition has been reviewed. Number one, the outdoor parking lights are detailed at 30 feet in height. The commission and or council may wish to review the proposed height. Two, a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals would be required for a deficient number of parking spaces. This department has no further objections to this petition. That letter is signed by Jerome Hanna, Director of Inspection. And then the last two letters are uh, letters of no objection coming from the Department of Finance and Office of Treasurer, uh, dated April 16th and dated April 17th, respectively, and signed by Linda Shield, Treasurer of the City of Livonia, and Colleen Coleman, Chief Account. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Termina. Is there any questions for our planning department? Mr. Chair. All right, we have Mr. Caramagno and then a couple others. Mark, maybe I didn't hear. Uh, why 30 feet on the light poles? You know, I think um, it probably has mostly to do with the scale of the uh, development. We do allow for exceptions at most of our shopping centers. 
larger shopping complexes, uh, they request the, the, the taller standards to get better light throw uh, throughout the parking areas. Um, um, so I'll, I'll let the en uh, uh, site engineer uh, address that. Now, whether or not they can go to 20 feet, maybe it's not a major issue, but uh, they may not have known about our 20 foot limitation, but, um, but, but it's not uncommon that we allow the 30 feet on some of our larger projects. Fair enough, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caramagno. I believe Mr. Ventura had a question. Chairman, uh, Mr. Tormina, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, I may have misheard you. So <laughs> uh, here in our write-up, uh, May 14th regular meeting, it talks about the only changes discussed at the study meeting involve exterior finishes of the building. On the original plan said EFIS was identified as primary finish in the upper floors, an updated rendering provided by the study meeting showed cast stone on floors one and two and metal panels on the remaining floors above, which is what I thought I understood you to say. Correct. Okay. The last sentence in this paragraph, however, says, the most recent plan set provided by the architect shows the same exterior design features, but switches back to the EFIS panels <laughs> on yeah. the upper floors. You know, so, we, I, I did not have a chance to delete that sentence before okay. it went out to print because I think there was a mistake. There was a miscommunication between my office and the architect where they did submit the, uh, uh, where I did have a copy of the previous drawings and, uh, and um, uh, but he clarified that by submitting the, the most updated uh, plan set that you have, uh, which that does the show the A5.00R drawing at the back of this package. Uh, that is correct. That should, if you look carefully at the, um, <coughs> Exterior elevation plans. Hopefully, you'll see where it calls out metal panels instead of EFIS on the side of the building. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Mr. Long, did you have a question? No, uh, he was asked, okay. asked and answered. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else uh, with any questions for our planning staff? I don't see anybody. Uh, so we'll go to our petitioner who's here. Uh, we'll start with uh, whoever wants to start. I know there's several folks here from our petitioner. <laughs> Again, I'll just ask that you start with your name and address. You got it. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. My name is Mitchell Harvey with Stonefield Engineering. Address is 607 Shelby Street, Detroit, Michigan. Um, I'm here representing the applicant Livonia Hotel Group, and we are seeking site plan approval for the proposed dual brand hotel located at 19265 Victor Parkway. Um, I put together a little slideshow, kind of take you guys through the site here. Um, so the proposed site is on a 3.2 acre lot and it was recommended for approval for a C4 zoning by the city council back in January. So I'm gonna walk in through. To the north we have Dave and Buster's um, Embassy Suites M3. Um, to the south we talked, Mark talked about that uh, regional basin. And then to the east we have Victor Parkway and then to the west we have the I-96 and um, Seven Mile Road interchange there. Um, the site is currently the vacant sports uh, dock sports retreat and it's unused parking lot. That's a picture we took a couple weeks ago out there. Um, and hopefully we get a good idea of what we're proposing here, which is an eight, a 218 room A-loft and element dual brand hotel. Um, the A-loft would be located towards the western side, so kind of the southern leg of that L, and then to the east we would have the element, which would be the more extended stay option. Um, we have proposed 178 parking spaces on site. It was re reviewed by Marriott, and they believe that we are self-sufficient in parking. Um, we have also proposed 30,000 square feet of landscaping, where 20,000 is required and an additional 14 trees. Um, as far as architectural features go, um, the architect's here, so I'll leave her for any questions with that, but um, you know, we propose significant architectural features across the site to kind of distinguish the two brands that have been blended into one six-story building. And um, the, the building facade will be a, a mixture of various ex exterior finishes, including the Nikki Ha wood look panels, metal panels, stone, 
stone veneer, and other modern uh, finishes. Um, so it is our belief that this project for the proposed Aloft and Element dual brand hotel will provide a destination hotel for uh, professionals traveling through Livonia and in the surrounding areas. Um, yes, yeah, so we have any, every, people from ownership and architectural team here. So any questions, we'll be happy to ask. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. This is an exciting uh, proposal, very unique property. Uh, do we have any questions for our petitioner at this time? Mr. Chairman. All right, we'll start with Mr. Bondura. I, I, Mr. Harvey, I'll, maybe you could answer it. Yeah. You know, you're going to tear down docks, obviously, and then the footprint of this building is significantly bigger than docks. Yeah. Have you guys conducted soil samples for ground suitability? Uh, we have them ordered. Uh, I, they might have came in. I'll have to double check, but we have them ordered. And we're are you anticipating any on? Because no, we're moving the building further north away from that that basin, so we shouldn't have any issues. Okay, and then re in regards to parking, you you're saying you're self-sufficient, but are you still going to cooperate with Dave and Buster's and Los Amigos for additional parking? Yeah, I mean the 178 on site is more than we need; is plenty for us. But we do have that 71 uh, spaces in a shared parking agreement that. We don't believe there'd be any overlap in, you know, when Dave and Buster's is busy is generally the weekends and when we anticipate our peak hours would be, you know, weekdays. So those shared parking spaces generally won't need to be used, but in the case that they do, it's kind of flip-flop the peak hours of parking generation. Gotcha. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Bongiro. Any other questions? Ms. Smiley? Uh, on that matter, do you ha uh, anticipate a restaurant in either of these? or just a coffee shop? It's just a small um, kind of bar area with a few menu items, not a that, uh, not a restaurant where people that wouldn't be staying at the hotel would come, come to. to. Okay, that was my question, yeah. So you're not anticipating, other than your um, clients or your guests at the um, either the loft or the element would be using it? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Any other questions for our petitioner, Mr. Long? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Harvey, I'm not sure if this is for you or someone else in your entourage, but uh, just a couple of just general questions about the uh, the element. Um, well, first of all, on the second and on the upper floors, there's a door connect. You, you can walk between the two hotels, correct? There's a, but there's a on, door on the first separating floor? The on, on the uh, on the f above floors where there's rooms. Looking at the floor plan, it looks like there's like there's a door. Is that a fire door? Is that a lot door that's locked separating the two? Can you speak to that? I'm Susan Bowers. I'm with Bowers & Associates, 2400 South Huron Parkway, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48104. The only connection between the two, physical connection, where you could go from one hotel to the other will be on the first floor. There's no connection on the upper floors. Okay, I'm looking at the second floor, second level floor plan. Um, there's a, right by the stairway, it looks like there's a door. There's supposed to be a wall there. Okay. See, there's, well, there is a door there, uh -huh. um, but it's not a, a guest used door. It would okay. be a um, the cleaning staff has access to both sides, but not guests. So it would remain locked, and like, except for in case Emergency of a fire. Emergency situation. Right. It, right. Would, it would. It would. Okay. Um, and then, are you able to speak? Just I'm just curious in this case um, to the concept of the commons. Um, so these are smaller rooms, and they have like a shared living area. Is my understanding from reading the? Are you the, talking about the element? At the element, yeah, and the uh, it would be the far west room. Yeah, as Mark, it is. It's, or far um, east, far east room. It's a different concept, similar to something. Um, it's an extended stay, so so that instead of being stuck in it like your room per se, like a standard hotel, room, you have a common area that you can go to where you can watch TV, hang out, where you're not so isolated in your extended stay there. So you've got basically four small rooms that have access. So the studio commons room, is that a, a keyed door as well? And only That's the people, key door. Only the people who are staying in those four rooms Correct. can get into there. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Long. Any other questions for our petitioner? I don't see any other questions. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? Sir, feel free to come forward. You can uh, use that podium if you'd like. Good evening. 
Good evening, uh, Eric Kaczynski. Address is 37734 Pickford Drive in Livonia, Michigan. I live in the subdivision to the south across Seven Mile. Um, my apologies for not showing up to the, uh, to the study session. I wasn't aware of this till, quite frankly, just the other day when I received the email. Um, looking at the uh, proposed hotel, my concern really is uh, the height of the hotel uh, going down Victor Parkway. Uh, the other large buildings, the Victor Five uh, office building and the Embassy Suites are both uh, five, five stories tall. So the sixth story, um, it sticks out. This is kind of an exposed area. As you go down Victor Parkway, uh, most of the buildings are set off. Most of the buildings don't, uh, they don't pop out at you. This one kind of pops out at you. Um, little concern if we establish a precedent here on this property for six feet or six stories, uh, there's a proposed um, luxury apartments just across uh, Victor Parkway. Are we going to create a situation where Oh, well, we got six stories over here. It's okay to have six stories over here, and now we're, we're building kind of out of scale for the area. So that was my, my major concern with the proposal as it, uh, as it was given. Um, there was obvious planning by previous uh, administrations in this area. It seems that that five-story limit was purposeful, at least from the way I'm looking at it. Uh, I'd like to see something go in this spot. I think a hotel is appropriate, but when you look at the size of the building and combine that with the parking, um, gee, if we went to five stories and that was doable for these folks, we wouldn't need the parking. Maybe that wasn't to be an issue. Maybe this solves a couple of problems by just scaling it back a little bit. So that's my, my major concern with this proposal as it is. I don't have a problem with a hotel just maybe a little bit less. All right, thank you, we appreciate that, Mr. Kaczynski. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? I don't see anyone else coming forward. Um, again, we always give the petitioner an opportunity to step back up and address <coughs> anything that you heard. Uh, the main point discussed was the uh, size of the building. If you wanted to speak to that, you're free to. Yeah, I'll j just real quickly. What we noticed is as you go from the embassy suites going south, there's a approximately 8 to 13 foot grade change as you go down. So standing further back from the building, it'll actually appear in line with some of the buildings further to the north because they're at a higher elevation. Um, kind of what we were what we were thinking there to not make it so as 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 big. All right. That's thank okay. you. Thank you. Is there anything else that uh, uh, anybody would like to add uh, to this petition so far, this presentation? I don't see anyone else uh, wishing to speak. Is there any uh, additional questions or comments from the Planning Commission? If not, uh, then I believe a motion would be in order on this item. Chairman. Mr. Ventura. I'd like to offer an approving resolution. <clears throat> At this request to construct a new five-story, sorry? Yep, that's, that's it. You just chopped the floor off. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, Mr. Kaczynski. Mr. Kaczynski is really happy over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in that two six-story you know, hotel. And don't don't read that first part. I got it. Apparently they've got, uh, yeah. that was a. All right. That was a table. I'm going to start over again. That's the Easter egg. <laughs> that the site plan, I'm sorry, that this request to construct a new six-story hotel on um, part of the property at 28101's. That's it. the wrong that's address. Said, don't yeah. 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 Wow. Right. Oh, this is really is hereby wow. approved. We'll, we'll insert the correct address there. Is hereby approved subject to city council approval and the following conditions. That the site plan identified as drawing C2 dated April 11th, 2019 as revised, prepared by Stonefield Engineering and Design is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number two, that this approval is subject to the petitioner being granted a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals for deficient parking and any conditions related thereto. Number three, that the landscape plan identified as drawing C4 dated April 11th, 2019, as revised, prepared by Stonefield Engineering and Design is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. 
and the four that all disturbed lawn areas shall be sodded in lieu of hydro seeding. Number five, that the underground sprinklers are to be provided for all landscaped and sodded areas and all planted materials shall be installed to the satisfaction of the inspection department and thereafter permanently maintained in a healthy condition. Number six, that the rendered exterior elevations plan identified as sheet plus number A5.00R prepared by Bowers and Associates received by the Planning Commission on April 30th, 2019 is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number seven, that all rooftop mechanical equipment visible to the public shall be concealed on all sides by screening that shall be of com compatible character, material, and color to the other exterior materials on the building. Number eight, that the three walls of the trash dumpster areas shall be a minimum of seven feet in height constructed out of building materials that shall complement that of the building and the enclosure gate shall be of solid panel steel construction or durable, long-lasting solid panel <coughs> fiberglass and maintained and when in, not in use, closed at all times. Number nine, that only conforming signage is approved with this petition and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number 10, that the specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the inspection department at the time the building permits are applied for. And number 11, pursuant to section 19.10 of ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia, this approval is valid for a period of one year only from the date of approval by the city council. And unless the building permit is obtained, this approval shall become null and void at the expiration of said period. You did well, Mr. Ventura. That was a difficult start, <laughs> but, but you finished strong. We, we recovered. Thank you. Is, is there a, a support for that motion? Support. All right. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Ventura, supported by Mr. Bongero. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Mr. Bongero. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye, Chairman Wilshaw. Votes aye, motion passes. We'll go on to the City Council with an approving recommendation and we wish you the best of luck with your project. And uh, again, we uh, have item number five, which was the Bob's Discount Furniture, which again, the petitioner has asked that we postpone that item to a future meeting, so we will uh, do that. And that will take us to the pending section. We need a motion to table it or? Uh, well, we, we I don't know that we need to table something that we haven't uh, started to discuss yet. Uh, oh. I, I believe we can do that delay at the direction of the chair. You can delay without a motion. That... Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I, mean, I th believe we can do that at the direction of the chair to just postpone an item. Is that correct? I think that's fine. And this is not a public hearing, so we're not uh, obligated to hear it. So I will use my executive authority. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> then I'll take us to uh, pending item section of our agenda, uh, item number six. And that is the approval of the minutes of the 1,141st public hearing and regular meeting held by the commission on April 23rd, 2019. And I believe all members were present. Is there a support for that? So moved. A motion by Mr. Long, supported by support. Mrs. McHugh. If there's no objection, I think we can safely show seven to approve that item. And that will take us to the end of our agenda. Is there any other business to come before the commission? Seeing and hearing none, uh, a motion to adjourn would be in order. I move we adjourn. Support. All right, motion to adjourn by Mrs. Smiley, supported by Mr. Long. Again, if there's no objection, we'll safely show seven on that. And that will take us to the end of our meeting. I'd like to thank Livonia Television staff for their contribution. And with no further business to come before the Planning Commission, we will adjourn the meeting at 8.59 p.m. Thank you and good night, Livonia.